we are with that beautiful piece of the world that you're in. So uh, Lake Atitlan is a national treasure of Guatemala and it is a, a popular tourist destination. And almost all jobs in Panajachel are linked to tourism. And that, that particular town is suffering because uh, virtually 100% of tourism has gone away for over a month now. This is a um, unique country in that it's the only uh, country in the Western Hemisphere that has a majority indigenous population. It's a multicultural Mayan indigenous population. And I often tell my friends in Seattle or where I lecture or Rotarians, the country of Guatemala is, I, I call it a country of two worlds. You kind of have a first world uh, economy and medical schools and businesses in the city, the capital city, Guatemala City and Antigua. Those two areas is essentially the money center of Guatemala um, and it's relatively modern. Then you have 12 billion other people out in the rural areas that are Mayan. And there's not much middle class. This is a country of um, relatively lower poor class Mayans who live subsistence. Not all of them are, um, but a large majority of them are. And in the place where I live, if I even tried to give someone a check, they wouldn't know what a bank account is. It's a cash-based subsistence society. It's somewhat off the grid. Um, and that's how people function here. So we have members living all around the lake. Um, there's 100,000 people living right around the shores of the lake, and in our state, about 400,000. It's called the state of Sololá. So we are immersed in all these little communities, and each town, um, each one of these towns has its own um, way to distribute food. I go to the municipal, the Cocote, it's the town council of my town of Agua Escondida. There are about uh, between five and 6,000 people in my immediate town. My school serves, our school serves them, uh, a couple thousand more people. So there's at least 7,000 people in the four or five towns around our school. And I went to the town Cocote and they did a town census. They went door to door and they have now identified 80 families in a uh, uh, food crisis, and they're mostly the elderly. The elderly would rely on their 25-year-old son in Hayward, California, sending money back. Well, they're not building much in Hayward, California, so that guy's not doing construction anymore, and dad back here or grandpa back here is going hungry. There's, there's, no, there's no way to recuperate cash quickly um, so we have 80 families in Agua Escondida, and today I did a, another food distribution to them, uh, uh, to 20 particular families. We're doing them every week. Food supplies in Panajachel, there, we have a couple of members in Panajachel, um, but uh, one of them in particular in one neighborhood called Hukanya has, uh, I think he's identified up to 40 families now, and they are... Um, they have done the same thing, identified the families in food crisis through their local neighbor contacts and their own uh, council there and have delivered food at least once and are continuing. The problem here is that you all know this isn't a quick feed them once or twice and then it, the problem goes away. We're, we're, we're estimating a four month um, downtime of regular work, regular jobs, school closures, everything's, you know, you, you, you can see that curve. They always say we're flattening the curve. Well, the curve is generally about four months long in all these, in all these countries, and I, we think it'll be similar here. Panajachel's problem, problem is primary lack of tourism, and the economy has come to a standstill. Um, Armand Boissy, our president, lives in Santa Cruz, La Laguna. Uh, we have another member in Haibalito. We have another member, um, Mohammed Gohar, in an area right next to Santa Cruz. All three are identifying um, lists of people that are in the same kind of um, short-term crisis. Um, so there are a couple hundred families identified by friends of Santa Cruz and um, uh, friends of the lake. Armand uh, helps with uh, 
various organizations around the lake. We have many of our members in our PANA club are in NGOs. We have our own, you know, our own uh, target populations of, in our own programs that we're already doing. So we already have these kind of community contacts to reach out quickly when there's hunger. Next slide, please. And I also wanted to observe uh, uh, that if those of you who are looking at the chat, I'm not that quick at adding it in my head, but I think we've got close to two grand raised here or pledged, uh, Will, so that's very encouraging. Awesome, thank you so much. Just an update uh, as I'm editing this video. With the donations from members totaling around 2,600, our club's board voted to uh, bump that up and have wired, I believe, $5,000 down to the Rotary Club of Lake Atitlan. So a good result. Um, you know, we've done all kinds of global grants and district grants, and we, we know the timelines on these. Um, this is essentially an urgent problem, and <clears throat> Rotary E Club of Lake Atitlan has received club-to-club -club grants for various other kinds of programs. And it's a pretty easy deal. The club raises money in their club and they electronically send to our club's bank account. We pay the $30 fee on our end just to process that. And in a few days, you have a, a money in the bank. It's relatively quick. Um, if someone said, I would really like to have a tax donation uh, tax deductible donation, I would like it to go through a 501c3. So um, my own mission, Opal House, has been around for 12 years. And on a number of occasions, if someone said, could you route this money to Rotary? I want to send $500 and I'd like it to go to Rotary for your program. Um, and then I would document that Rotarian Y has donated this money to go to Rotary E Club, and then I give Rotary E Club a check. So that's a way to receive. And our focus as club is mostly on the elderly, and as a family with kids, that the, uh, either the father cannot work for any disabilities or condition, or families with kids that don't have uh, uh, fathers who help them. And, and also, uh, on the description, uh, Bill uh, William was doing. Uh, on the population of Guatemala, you have to remember that of the, the 17 million estimated, half of them are under, under 25 uh, years old. So it's, uh, it's basically uh, a very young population and the, the kids that are, are touched by this crisis. So protein. There is a big protein problem in Guatemala. We call it, um, shockingly today, where we live in this state, there is still 65% malnutrition in children under five. How would you rather have us get this money to you? Would you rather have it simply wire transferred to your club? It depends the quantity. Uh, after a certain amount, it's easier for us to have it channeled through the United Way, Rotary United Way Association in the city, because they can manage uh, the buying power they have, and uh, we will be a recipient of the, the bags prepared Okay. Uh, and so it depends the quantity we're talking about. When it's uh, under a certain amount, we can manage it locally because we can do the buying. Of course, we won't have much more leverage with what we can buy because uh, um, we don't have, uh, we cannot get discount for the volume. That's why we were talking about United Way. In a, uh, it could be a club to club because club to club, we can work out a certain amount uh, locally and not in each location. So it will depend the quantity we are talking if we've got, you know, on order of two thousand dollars, would you prefer we just wire transfer that to your club? Yes. yes. Unless somebody wants a tax deductible donation, then they can go through Opal House. Okay, that's really clear. We wanna, we know you're good partners to work with, and we're happy we can help on this sprint, and and uh, we'll get this uh, edited and shared in a way that hopefully it will drive more contributions your way. Just a big thank you for the compassion and networking and. Uh, it's pretty amazing how we can uh, transcend cultures and, and places uh, relatively quickly and, and make a big difference and make an impact, especially for acute crisis like this. So we appreciate it very much. We, um, we take it seriously, uh, our obligations to be good partners, and we really appreciate your generous hearts. Thank you very much.
thank you. Yes, I'm joined with really appreciate it locally, and, and the money here go a long way, so we'll make sure it's still us. Call it a wrap then. Thanks again. We'll follow up. We will take action. <laughs> Patrick. All right. All the best to everybody. All right. Bye-bye, all. Blessings. Bye.